Praise the Lord. Welcome to the program this week. Pray everyone is safe and sound. Everybody's got their electricity back on and they're warm and cozy. Amen. That everybody is well. Today, I would like for us to just come together and welcome the Holy Spirit in. And let's talk about the Word. He said, where two or three are gathered in His name, He would be in the midst. Amen. Father, we pray as we come and gather into Your Word today, Lord. Prepare our hearts to be good ground for the Word to fall into on good ground. And it would spring forth and bring forth much good fruit. Give us understanding, the wisdom, and the knowledge, and the revelation of you. Father, that we may have your wisdom, Lord. That we may know what is the hope of the calling in you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. And let's see what the Lord has to say to us. Amen. Starting with the first verse, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. And every one members one of another. See, we come together as one member of the body. Amen. But what is a living sacrifice? Amen. You know, when we think about the word sacrifice, we think about what took place back in the Old Testament when they were sacrificing the, the lambs, the, the do turtle doves, and uh, and all this as a sacrifice for sins once a year the high priest would go into the holy of holies and he would perform the sacrifice for the sins of the people amen but see he had to be perfect he had to be without sin and without blemish he had to have nothing against him amen but see that don't have to take place anymore because Jesus Christ came, became our high priest, became the living sacrifice, shed his blood on the cross that we didn't have to go through that every year. We didn't have to go through that every time something took place. Amen? Or every time we made a mistake, he made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Amen? We don't have to go through the rituals, the man-made rituals rituals anymore but understanding this requires some thought you know uh, the scripture from the New Testament refers to us presenting ourselves as living sacrifices but see presenting ourselves means that God is not forcing us to do this part of the gospel we must put forth the effort to come to Him and submit ourselves, especially our bodies, to Him. Amen? This means that God desires to come to Him, submit ourselves, especially when we don't feel like it. Amen? You know, some people say, well, I don't feel like reading my Bible. What's that? Read your Bible even when you don't feel like it. Amen. Pray even when you don't feel like it. Sing praises even when you don't feel like it. Lift your hands in worship even when you don't feel like it. Be willing to obey when God gives you something to do. 
even if you don't feel like it. Amen. Help our neighbor even when we don't feel like it. And here's the one that uh, hits home to a lot of people. Love others even when we don't feel like it. Love the sinners even when you don't feel like it. Love the murderers even when we don't feel like it. Amen. You say, why? Love covers a multitude of sin. Your love has caused a lot of people to turn from their wicked ways. They think they're unlovable. They're convinced they're unlovable. The thief says, well, I can't change my ways. Nobody will want to be around me. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. But when you show love to that thief, hmm? when you show love, compassion, and turn that person around, that don't mean you condone what they're doing. But you let them know that they are loved in spite of. Say, Jesus loved us. God loved us. We were yet so wicked in our sins that he gave his only begotten son to die for us. Now that's love. Amen. So let's die to ourselves. Amen. Let's die to ourself and love the unlovable. We were there. Amen. We were there. He said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. He tells you to go visit the sick. You say, Lord, I just don't feel like it today. I've got too much to do. You know something? It could just take one kind word, one touch, one moment of compassion that could cause that person to want to get well. Because see, there's a lot of people that's sick that have given up because they don't think anybody cares. So let's be that, present our body as a living sacrifice. Amen? Put aside our feelings. Put aside what we want to do. You think Jesus wanted to carry the weight of the sins of the whole world upon himself? No. That's why he prayed in the garden. And he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, thy will be done. See, that's what we've got to come to that place of surrender. We've got to come to that place where we're willing to lay aside what we want and what we feel like doing. Amen. The next statement is this. That is the reasonable and that it is a service. So God's not asking some outrageous thing of us when he tells us, not your will, but mine. He understands us. Oh, yes, he understands us better than we understand ourselves. But he said, let your will line up with mine. Amen. Because I know the thoughts that I have toward you. I know what the end there is. For you, amen. Let your will line up with mine, God is saying. Amen. This is really what it means to present ourselves a living sacrifice. 
A living sacrifice dies over and over again. Amen. There's days when I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to sit back, get in the Bible, and read, and pray, and meditate upon His Word, and about the goodness of God. And He's nudging me, you need to go. You need to speak with so-and-so. You need to take something to some people over here. You need to go and tell them that I love them. He said, Lord, they know you love them. He said, but remind them. Amen. Well, Lord, I'll call them. No, you go. See, that's the sacrifice. He's not asking us to die a physical death for them. But he's asking us to die to our wants. Amen. To our feel-good things that we want to do for ourselves. But you know the best pleasures that we can get is when we can lift somebody else up and let them know how much they are loved in the kingdom of God. How much that God loved them. Amen. Don't be conformed to the things of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I like to say it this way. And be not conformed to this world or any longer with its superficial values or customs. But be you transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on God, godly values and ethical attitudes that you may prove for yourselves what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, His plans, His purpose for you. You know what the Greek word for transformed is? The meaning of it is metamorphosis. It refers to the process that leads to an outward or permanent change. You know, we see the butterfly in its cocoon. And after a while, that butterfly starts coming out of that cocoon. It's transformed into something beautiful. Amen? That's what we do when we're renewing our mind with the Word of God. We're being transformed into that vessel that God can use. Into that person that God can use. Amen? How wonderful when you stop and think about where you came from before you came to the Lord. When you're so far out in sin. I know I can look back at my own life. My own situation. When I was deep so deep in sin. I couldn't find my way back. But God. In his mercy. And his love. Drew me by his spirit. And let me know that I was loved. He sent people across my path to remind me that he loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son. That I could have life and have it more abundantly. And when I came to him and I surrendered my will to his will, and I was being transformed into what God wants me to be. And I'm doing that daily by the renewing of my mind. By renewing my mind in His Word. 
Not only that, but acting upon the word. Believing the words that I read. And then acting upon and being obedient to what he tells me to do. See, that's a progressive thing. It's progress progressively being changed from one strength to another. But here, here's the thing. When we're obedient to him, when we believe God and we're obedient, see, like Abraham was, the Word tells us that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen? When we believe God, we'll act upon it and it's counted on us for righteousness. That's how we become righteous as Jesus was righteous. That means right standing with God. Look up the word righteous. It means right standing with God. Don't you want to be in right standing with God? Be like Enoch was over there. You know, one day he was walking with God. And God just took him on home. And he had this testimony that he pleased God. I want to have that testimony when I leave this walks of life that I please God. And when we please God, we're in right standing with God. We're walking in His will, in His perfect will, amen, in His good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Too many want to just be in a permissive will. And I found being in a permissive will, you're miserable. Because you're, you're just trying to walk in uh, uh, just enough to get by. Uh-uh, I don't want that. I want to be pleasing unto God. I want to walk in the whole thing. I want to be under the whole umbrella of salvation. I want to be under everything that God wants me to be. I want to be that child that he can say, when I leave here, he says, Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over little. I'll make you ruler over much. Amen. What a welcome home that would be. Amen. So are we conformed or transformed? He said, Only the meek and pure and humble have an inheritance with God. Being a living sacrifice is the greatest show of humility. That a saint can have. Amen. So are we conformed or transformed? Are we renewing our mind daily? Are we asking the Lord, Lord, what can I do for you today that's pleasing to you? Amen. Some of you think there might be a third choice. Some want to think there's a middle of the road. That's just ludicrous thinking. I wouldn't even want to be there. Amen. Jesus said he would, that we would, he would have us hot or cold. Lukewarm people make him want to vomit. That's what he means when he says he'll spew you out of his mouth. You'll find that in Revelation, the third chapter, verses 15 and 16. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold or hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. He was talking to the Laodicean church. Amen. But he said he had somewhat against them. You know, I would rather be on fire for God than setting it in a lukewarm situation. People say, well, I don't have to choose today. Mm, he said, today is the day of salvation. Amen. 
let's be obedient. Amen. But there's only two choices. Life or death. Blessing or cursing. Obedience or disobedience. Amen. Heaven or hell. Amen. When we disobey God, we respond as children of disobedience and are conformed to the world. Think about that. The world system encourages self-indulgence, self-will, and the strengthening of the self-life. This way of iniquity leads to death, not life. We cannot do eternal things in our own strength and with our own ideas. Many times we reflect our own thoughts and call them God. When we continue in this, we pick up religious devils which foster more iniquity. If we never lay it all down and allow God to do what he will with us, we will become conformed to the world even more. Think about it. This is how the spiritual church is differentiated from the religious church. The spiritual church is the one in which Jesus is Lord of all and where his sheep are being transformed into his glorious image and doing his will. Amen? But in this number, be in this number. Be the one who is doing the Father's will and not be conformed to the things of this world. But let's be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen? Getting the Word of God in us. Reading the Word. Seeking His will. Seeking what God wants. Seeking understanding. Amen? So that we're transformed. Transformed into the righteousness of God. Amen? To renew something means to make it new again. Amen? Our minds must be renewed, 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 and renewed daily. Think about it. When we can put off seeking God's will, put off Finding out what God wants us to do and what He expects us to do keeps us even farther away from God. Amen? Our minds must be renewed daily. Amen? You know, when we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, this brings God's power into our minds. Amen? If His power does not come into our minds to start the transformation process, then we can think about scriptures all day long, but only come away with rote memorization. That's why you got so many people that's teaching, that's, uh, well, let's put it this way. They're speaking the Word of God, but there's no power behind it. Amen. God's got to be in the middle of it. Amen? His Spirit has got to do the yielding. The, His Spirit's got to do the drawing. His Spirit's got to do the anointing. Amen? I know His Word's already anointed. Amen? But that vessel that's behind that Word, oh, let me tell you, it's got to be anointed. It's got to be walking in the statutes of God. It's got to be renewing their mind daily in the Word of God. It's got to have that transformation being transformed into the vessel that God can use. Amen? The mind must be empowered by God for renewal to take place. Amen? It does not happen automatically mm, when we're born again. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Presenting our bodies as living sacrifices to God on a daily basis can only do this. Amen. It's not a every once in a while thing. Children, when the sacrifice is accepted, then the fire falls. 
The fire of God is the power to transform. Amen. When we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Oh, and it was asked when God can use it, the Holy Spirit can work through. When we are obedient to the Lord, when He's telling us to, to go visit the sick and we, we are obedient, when He tells us to pray for our enemies, then, hey, it heaps coals of fire upon their head. Amen. That's a commandment. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Pray for your enemies. Amen. When we meditate upon the Word, and the anointing for our minds allows the meditation to take, so to speak. Amen. We met, we should meditate upon His Word day and night. Don't let it depart from you. Amen. Continually pray. Continually giving thanks. Continually rejoicing what God's doing for you. Amen. And what He's doing for those around you. Amen. Our minds must become filled with His Word and revelation knowledge. This is the mind of Christ. Amen. You want to be more like Christ? Get in His Word. Amen. Meditate on His Word. The renewed mind is the one that thinks like Jesus, makes the right decisions, knows how to pray for the sick, alleviates suffering, cast out the devils, and raise the dead. Whoo! This mind is empowered by the Holy Spirit and is alive with God. Amen. You say, I can't do that. Oh, the Word tells us we can. Let's become transformed. Transformed into the vessel that's pleasing unto God. Let's lay aside religion. Let's lay aside the things that the world has taught us. And let's believe God's Word. But we've got to make the effort to become transformed. Amen. And when we are transformed, oh, the power of God, the Spirit of God can work through us. Amen. Oftentimes we attempt to change our own strength so that we can appear to be like other Christians. We know, you know, we all have different gifts, uh, but you know what? It all works together. It all works together for the edifying of the church. Amen. We can only be all that God wants us to be as we follow His instructions to first present ourselves as living sacrifices and meditate on His Word until we are transformed into His glorious image. This comes first before we attempt to prove His will in our lives. So many times we run out with a few scriptures and we try to conquer the world with very little preparation. Amen? This process prepares us for service. Be transformed and not conformed to this world. Let's believe God. Let's read His Word. Let's believe Him. Let's act upon Him, uh, on the Word. And let's ask Him, Lord, what do you want me to do? Show me what you want me to be. Show me what you want me to do. That I can bring honor and glory unto you. Show me what you want me to do. To bring souls to be born into the kingdom of God. That is our duty right there, to be that light to the lost and dying world. Amen. Are we being that light? Are we being transformed into His likeness? I pray that we are. Amen. So until next time, this is Evangelist Lucy Lowe from Grimsley, Tennessee, Post Office Box 133-38565. And my email is lucylowe1944 at gmail.com. We invite you to let us know what you think about the program. If you've got any requests or if you need prayer, we invite you to contact us and we'd be honored to pray with you. We can be of help to you at any time. Please contact us. We love you, but most of all, Jesus loves you. 
He came and gave his life on that old cruel tree that we could have life, that we could live with him after this old world has vanished away. Amen. Are you ready today? I pray that you are. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Call upon me while I am near. Amen.